for you. I, I'm recalling a 15-year-old. I think she was, she had just turned 15. Her mother, my logical mom, brought her to me many years ago. And she made a very, a very terrible claim about this child. And I quote her, she said, this girl is a whore. Now, that is not a nice word that she used to describe her 50-year-old. Uh, and um, the, the child was sitting right next to her mom and the child was weeping. I mean, uncontrollably she went. And she didn't challenge anything. And um, the mother piled on the, the, the accusations. We have just piled them on, piled them on, piled them on. I felt hopeless, you know, looking at this, trying to figure out what is, what is happening here. She was raising this child on her own. When you, when you tinker with this landmark, when you tinker <laughs> with these landmarks, you, you have consequences. All of us must know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as she, uh, the mother came to the end of our presenting our evidence, and she had considerable evidence. She was leaving me to judge and sentence this girl. I simply asked her if she could excuse us, and so I can talk with this child one on one find out if there's any defense. The child simply said to me when the mother left, you know, left the room, Sir, I want you to ask mommy this. Ask her if she remembers the night when she came into my bedroom and her husband was coming out of my wardrobe. Ask her if she remembers the, the time when um, she came to the washroom, it was about 3 o'clock in the morning, and her husband and myself were coming out of the washroom. I asked her, sir, if, if she could remember the time, and the young lady gave me a third example. Well, I asked the girl, why do you want me to ask your mother that? And she said, my, the man who my mother has, and she's calling him, my mother's husband is not a husband. The man who my mother has, he forced me into sexual activity. Now, this is happening in the confines of the home. So I brought the mother back in, and um, I asked her the three, I put the three questions to her. By the, the time that she heard the second one, she was livid, and she asked me, what are you telling me? What are, actually, I'm not accusing anybody. I'm simply asking you a question. Could you remember those? And she, um, she became hostile to me. So I simply had to bring this meeting back to order. And, and, and she agreed. And then she, she, the mother started weeping. And the mother asked me, what are you saying to me? And I said, I just ask you a question. If you have the answers, you could tell me. She said, I know. I remember those three instances. But what are you saying? And I'm saying, I mean, you came and you said this child, you described this child. This mother, ball, ball. And this is what she said. My, this man is a good man. <laughs> this man pays the rent. This man brings food in this house. I can't do without this man. And here we have the dilemma that too many families mm -hmm. in this country face with. We place economic advantage over the rights of children. We place the fact that a male can provide a meal. We place a higher premium on that rather than the protection of our offspring. We believe that it is more important to assign values to somebody, whether it be male or female, who brings some benefit into the home over protecting our children. That mother wept and wept and wept and wept when she understood and recognized that this child was not the real culprit in the matter. I wonder 
right across the length and breadth of this nation. How many of you are suffering like that? How many children? Can you deal with the confessions of your children? Can you deal with the revelations of your children? And if we, it's not just our perspective, but we need to hear from them. And when we hear from them, it will help us to begin to understand again, perhaps the way we're building is wrong. I think, you know, um, it's a bleak um, picture you've painted there, Pastor. But I think one of the missing dimension in the whole family structure is that sometimes I think we don't consider the children as people. Mm -hmm. um, we, we treat them as, you know, <laughs> as they just matter. They're just mm -hmm. hanging around. They're just there. Uh, but some of the very things that um, we as parents are, 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 are cult of love, I mean, those are the very things that lay the, the initial foundation an initial impression in the lives of those children there. Um, they have a say, they are hurting, they suffer from some severe, some terrible experiences, okay? So um, we need to be conscious of that and also listen to what they have to say. They're never too small. <laughs> they might not be able to speak correctly or to articulate um, what they have in mind the way we can, but they have a say. But right? what this program, we, we we're looking at Langwell's Lemuel's mom, and uh, we said, let, let us for a second just take the lenses and let us look from the eyes of the young man. And uh, this is what we are encouraging, because this world, we are providers. We have to look after our children and so on. Any good man who provides for his children, that is all well and good. That is fine. But what is your children thinking? They have a say to, they have a life, they have experiences, they are hurting. So we cannot put them a, a nozzle on, on, on them and, and tell them, listen, little children must be seen and not be heard. The era for that is over. <laughs> you know, I, I work a lot among young people. And as you talk, the two things, two um, instances that jumped at me. I remember a young man, young guy, he's not more than four, he asked for a meeting to, to see me, four or five years ago. And I started to cry and ask, am I a bad child? So I asked him, why you mean, why why you think you're, you're bad? And he said, you know, just before I came, daddy left. And I believe that I am responsible for daddy leaving. So he wanted to know if he's a bad child. And um, so I had the task of convincing him that he is not bad. And we sometimes believe that these things don't trouble the children, but they do. He asked, could I call you daddy? I said, of course you can call me daddy. I remember the other one this three year old came to church and told the mother, not mommy, I see daddy in front. And the mother said, where do you see your father? Because your father gone, we we'll see them never return. I see daddy in front. And she said, show me your daddy, where you see daddy? He said, look, Pastor Sam is with daddy. It's amazing how these children are looking for an association, a father figure in their life. They're looking, they're looking for validation. Yeah. Yeah. They're looking for that certification from the world. Yeah. And you know, as they're look. looking for that kind of recognition. Yeah. The way of God is angry. You see, this structure, family, is not a government structure. No. It is not the structure of the Ministry of Human Services, the University of Vienna. God, this is not the United Nations structure. Mm -hmm. You try with that one, you know. I mean, <laughs> the, structure, the structure that God set up is an unbelievable structure. Yeah. And any time we tinker with it, we, 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 we are going to um, read the Constitution. You know, I feel about the design of God here. And um, even as I think about the design of God, I remember Pastor Austin earlier made mention of that word, template, and words that are synonymous with template are, are, are words like model, words like uh, design. Uh, one word stick out, stencil. You know when you go into school, you will take your stencil and you put it on your paper, and then you will draw the pattern of, of what is there. We are attempting to do away with God's design and draw our own pattern. Mm, yeah. If we do that, we will never get the design that God intends. Mm. There are structures in place that God would have put that we need to pattern ourselves if we want the, the, the direct print and, and, and therefore have the, the kind of consequences, the, the positive consequences that would ensue. 
You know, I remember as a child growing up, I used to say to myself, I want to get married at age 30. But something happens when you find the love of your life. <laughs> you want to be obedient to this world of leaving and leaving. And at age 25, myself and wife got married. You know, this year will be 15 years. And we are looking forward to the next 15 years. I really want to encourage the young people out there. So many young men and women, they are afraid to launch out. To really be obedient to this word, you will never regret once you stay with the word of God. And just allow the word of God to guide you and God will come through for you. You know, in our marks, our face there, we have lots of rules and guidance and regulations for you to follow. And if you remove that landmark, there will be a tendency for you to encroach. So when you encroach now, it means that you are leaving a straight path or the righteous path and try to walk in an ungodly path. Mm -hmm. So you quickly have to reestablish that landmark Amen. and continue our walk. We, we are for the old in the Old Testament with this concept is first mentioned with the landmark. We're familiar with parallels now. We yeah. you just heard from us so we, are, we, we, we were we were we were familiar with parallels made out of either steel or some other structure. Yeah. But in the original context, when Solomon was giving this advice, they used stones mm -hmm. and uh, especially for the widow, um, they would mark where the, 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 the land that her husband between it to her, they would mark it. And the stones were not just stones. On those stones, they wrote in the Hebrew language or they wrote in the Aramaic language, not just the ownership, but they placed on the stones. Anyone who dared to move those stones, they wrote curses. Mm -hmm. So you were interfering with someone's inheritance. And the consequences uh, that you paid with removing, trying to disinherit a family, a widow, there's no man to protect her. There were inherent consequences. There were curses on each stone. So when the, 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 the wise man said, listen, do not remove the ancient boundary marks. It's, it's, it's not just limited only to land. Mm -hmm. But we, we, we are using this as an example of the family, as examining the family. The family structure that was built and set up by God has been subjected to all kinds of assaults, yeah. mm -hmm. internally and externally. Look at our world, look at our communities. And uh, we haven't done sufficient justice yet by looking at the greatest casualties, our children, in the, in the family structure, when we begin to remove the ancient landmarks, the consequences are horrific. All you have to do is take time out and look and listen to children. Hear what they have to say. And then you'll want to see how best you can turn back time. Can I correct this? And one generation, another generation, another generation might be negatively affected. Love your family. We'll see you next week. Thank you for being part of Choices. Remember, you can join us at First Assembly for any of our regular weekly services. I'm Salisha on behalf of the set reminding you that your whole life is the sum of your choices. God bless you.